Well, thank you very much, Andy. I, I uh, want to make sure the rest of the room knows that when uh, Ambassador Card said that I was a young member of Congress, uh, Congresswoman Ross Lightning pointed out that it's all relative here in the halls of Congress. So <laughs> but I am I'm so proud uh, to be here today and um, honored to be part of this ceremony. As Andy mentioned, I have a very long relationship with Ned, longer then I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say, because it'll tell you how old I really am. But one of my very first jobs when I finished college was to work at USAID. And I was working at USAID in June of 1989. And one of the first projects we worked on uh, was doing our very best to try to get fax machines into the students in China. And if you think about that, at that time, fax machines were the height of technology, the height of ability to communicate. But um, those scenes from Tiananmen captured the world. And uh, it is so important for us to be here today, for us to be able to, to celebrate uh, what happened in the fight for freedom, to remember what happened in terms of, of the real slaughter and, and uh, the response of the government of China. Uh, and to make sure that, that, that every government around the world, every repressive government knows not just America is watching, but the whole world is watching. And in today's world, we see everything. But it, it, it has not been just the advent of modern technology that has helped us spread the words of freedom. And uh, I see so many friends in the audience, people like Ken Wallach and Michelle Dunn, both of whom I've worked with uh, on, on issues and efforts to help promote freedom. Um, we just had the opportunity about a month ago to have a visit here in the halls of Congress from a young man named Enrique Padron, who escaped. He was a boat person. He escaped from Cuba. And um, when I was talking to Enrique, he came to the U.S. in 1994, um, and he was a young boy. And I said to him, what gave you courage? What, you know, in 1994, there wasn't internet, um, and how was it that you knew that you would be willing to risk getting on a boat, crossing shark-infested waters, to come to the United States? What, what was that drive in you? He said, it was Ronald Reagan's speeches. And I said, well, how in the world did you hear those? He said, Radio Libre. And he said, our neighbors, sometimes we would have to put blankets over our head. We would have to tune our radios just right. We couldn't let anybody else know we were listening. But I heard those words of freedom. And it made me know I had to get to that place. And that is the kind of place America has to be today and always. And we have to make sure that those who are fighting for freedom all around the world know that we will always stand with you, that we will always stand on behalf of freedom. We've seen this both continuing in China with the repression that we've seen across the board. And the Chinese government has to know that we fundamentally believe and we know that the rights of man, the rights of a person to be free, those are rights that are inherent. We believe they come from God. They do not come from a government, and they cannot be stomped out by a government. So as we watch across the globe today, you have my assurance as a member of the House. You have the assurance of all the members that you've seen here. You'll have the assurance this is an absolutely bipartisan commitment, with Speaker Pelosi speaking here as well today. An absolutely bipartisan, ironclad commitment on the behalf of the United States Congress to make sure that we are, at all times and in all places, standing for freedom. And it is uh, with uh, honor now, I think I'm not giving an award, but our um, ranking member on the Homeland Security Committee, Mr. Uh, oh, sorry, Foreign Affairs Committee, previously Homeland Security, um, Mr. McCall has come in. I don't want to mess up your program, Carl. <laughs> okay, wonderful. But let me just end by saying congratulations very much um, to the Tibet Action Institute, to the World Uyghur Congress, to Tibet Aid, to those who are here today to be awarded this wonderful uh, memento, and, and the gratitude. Those of us in the United States who have the blessing of being able to live in freedom um, really need to stop, I think, every day and remember what it means. And we need to stop and remember what we do in this building. What we do in this building, what we're all going to rush out here to do, to go to the floor of the House, to cast our votes, 
We get to do that because we live in freedom and because throughout history, brave men and women have fought and died for that freedom. And that struggle and that fight continues today. I know of no more important obligation we have as Americans and as elected officials in the United States than to support those cries and those calls for freedom. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you to Ned. Thank you to Carl, Andy. Um, and thank you so much for having me here. I'm, I'm very honored and blessed to be with you today. So thank you so much. Thank you.